So here we have my GE General Electric AM FM clock radio cassette recorder. And this would have been a common sight in the 1980s or late 1980s and early 1990s. Now, a lot of people had this exact model of clock radio in the day. It basically did everything you wanted it to do. It played AM FM radio. It actually had two alarms. You could have a buzzer or you could wake up to the radio. It had a digital display for time. It's just blinking 12 o'clock. I just plugged it in, so it's blinking 12 o'clock until I set the actual time. And it actually had a cassette player, which you could actually record from. It actually had a speaker and it has a nice little record button here, but you could play your tunes with a single speaker, mono speaker up on top. And so looking at the bottom of it, just turned over, you can see that it is model number 7-4956B. There was an earlier model uh, with an A, uh, which is basically identical to this one. It just had some minor modifications, but this is the B version. And on this particular model, it does have a date code, and the date code is 4144C. I don't know what the C stands for, but I believe the number refers to the four would be the day of the week, so that would be Thursday. The next number, one, so it uh, most likely was uh, built in 1991, so early 1990s. And the 44 is the 44th week of that year. Now we do have an AC uh, plug right here, but it actually will work on a nine volt battery, which can be connected right here. So if you get annoyed with the blinking time right here, you could actually set the real time by these controls right here. There's a time set right here. Uh, the first uh, buttons right here is forward. This is reverse and you could advance uh, time fast or slow. So you would first need to hit the time button here and then just forward fast and you can see the time is going fast and then reverse. So, and then once you set it to whatever desire you want, it stops blinking. And of course it has an AM and also PM time indicator right here. And sometimes at night, this little digital display can be pretty bright. So it does have a little bright button right here, which you can actually dim the light like that. It's a little dim. It, it is actually on at night. You would be able to see that. And then you can brighten it back up again just by hitting this button. And just looking at the front, right uh, at the left, you actually have a microphone here for the tape recorder, which I said you can actually tape uh, record on a blank cassette. You have your time clock here, battery indicator backup light here, and then your AM or FM tuning stations right there. And then on the right side, you have your tuning knob where you can actually move uh, the tuner back or forth. It actually lights up. So right up on top, you have on off. So if I hit on. A-Choice Private Selection Bone-In Angus Steaks. They're on sale now for 50% off. There is a volume knob right here. Fresh for everyone. Or volume lever. Hey, and you can see that it is lit up the right bingy. there. And you can tune the radio to whatever station you want. I believe it is on FM right now. There is a switch on the side, which can switch it to AM. And there you go. And so you can dial it to your favorite AM station. And Kansas City's tight end over receptions with over... So again, this is an alarm clock uh, primarily. So you do have two wake up times that you could set right here. Currently, both of them are on the off position. Now you could either set it so music will play from the radio, or you can just have a alarm buzzer right here. Now this is a four uh, switch. Uh, these are four level switches. So currently they're off. The next switch up is for the music setting then the alarm setting, and then the top one is for the set position where you could actually set the time for the alarm. 
you would set the uh, alarm time using the same clock set as you did for the main time. So currently I have both alarms in the off position, but if I were to lift up, let's say one, uh, alarm one to either the music or the alarm set uh, location, you can see that the alarm one is indicated on the display. Again, also you can have both alarms on. So if I went ahead and raised up number two, number two is now shown on the display itself. And so you can either have one or the other alarms on or even both on and you can kind of go back and forth and switch whichever alarm you want to set. Now to set the alarm you would just select one or the other. You don't want to uh, do this for both at the same time. So you want to uh, select let's say alarm one. You want to bring it all the way up to set position and you'll see that it just automatically sets to 12 o'clock. And then you go ahead and use the uh, time set here, just like you did for the clock, to set the time you want for alarm one. And so we'll go ahead and hit it for 312. And then just move it back down and you'll see the, the original time will display. Same thing for the alarm two, you bring it up to the set position and then you can go ahead and set that for whatever time you want. Let's see if we can get it to uh, there, let's do uh, 3.13 just a minute later. And then bring it back down, back to the original time. Now kind of a smart thing they did because there's two t uh, alarms and two set times. Now if you were to actually bring both of these all the way up, you can see I bring up alarm one to the set position and it's, it's already displaying the 3.12. But if I were to do that to the alarm two also, bring that all the way up, you'll see it reverts back to the time. So it doesn't want you to actually set both at the same time and it's a little protection just to remind you that you can't do that, it'll just revert back to the, the clock uh, set time. So you can only do one at a time. And so with the times of the alarms set, then you could decide when to turn the actual alarms on. So let's just set alarm one to music. There, that will be the 312. And let's set alarm two to alarm. And we'll hear the differences between the two. And there you go. That's alarm one. It uh, reverted to the radio station. We'll go ahead and turn that off. And we'll wait for alarm two, which should be a buzzer. And there you go. That's the buzzer sound. You don't have any choice about what it sounds like, so it's pretty obnoxious. You can also hit a snooze if you want. I forgot how long the snooze is. It's either between 7 or 15 minutes. I, I would have to look it up. But uh, the snooze does work. And when you're ready, you could just turn off alarm 2 by bringing it all the way down. And of course, I did say it also can play uh, cassette cassette tapes and also record. You have the record button right here, the play, rewind, fast forward, stop and eject, and also pause right here. To uh, open up the lid here, you just hit that and go ahead and stick the tape in, shut the lid, and hit play. You can hit stop, you can fast forward, stop, rewind, stop, and also pause. And hit it again. It's kind of an old tape, that's what you're hearing, the kind of bad sound, but, um, but yes indeed, the cassette player works. And there you have it. That's my General Electric AM FM clock radio cassette recorder. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.